Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing fantastic today. We are attempting a new filming location in my room. My window is a little bit unreliable, especially on rainy days. So we're trying this for right now. We'll see how it works out. I am so excited for today's video because today we are casting the Poppy War Trilogy. Recently, it was announced that the Poppy War Trilogy by RF Kuang is going to be turned into a show. So I thought this was a great opportunity to share my own fantasy cast of the show and also talk a little bit about sea dramas as well. Now I know that Rebecca Rebecca Kwong has stated that she would ideally like the series to be animated and chances are a lot of scenes in the book would be better animated. But of course this cast is really just my own personal fantasy. I've been getting really into Chinese media. I've been watching a ton of sea dramas and Chinese movies. I would say in the past three months, 60% uh, of the media I've been watching has been in Mandarin. So I've been getting introduced to a lot of prominent names in Chinese film and TV, and it's really making me realize how much I love seeing representation of myself in my media. This is especially in the fantasy genre. I love fantasy, and I'm starting to really love Chinese fantasy, especially the xianxia genre. So of course, if The Poppy War were live action, uh, I would just be so excited to see more Asian faces on the screen. If you're not familiar with the Poppy War trilogy, it's an incredibly popular uh, series of fantasy novels by Rebecca Kwong. These books are currently making a wave in the fantasy community right now, and they're based on a fantasy fictionalized version of China. A lot of the events are very heavily influenced by modern Chinese history. They were some of the best books I read last year, so of course I was really excited to learn that a show based on the series is is in the works. So I've been working on this fan casting for a while. I've been so eager to put uh, a lot of my favorite sea drama actors in there, but for certain characters I've had to actively resist putting in that really typical sea uh, drama, pretty and pale aesthetic, that sort of actor into the role. Like I love sea dramas, but a lot of times uh, like all of the cast is really pretty and white skinned. And of course if everyone looked like that in a poppy war show, it would be so wrong because it would go against a lot of the stark realism that Rebecca Kwong was going for. And in addition, in the Chinese entertainment industry, uh, colorism is a very common practice. Skin whitening is a huge industry over there. And of course, colorism is something that is very heavily critiqued in the poppy war. Another thing of note in this video is that I will be mentioning a lot of people with Mandarin names. Uh, I will get tones wrong. I did my best to research tones beforehand, but uh, my Mandarin is very rusty. I'm just gonna get tones wrong. Just as a warning for those of you who speak way better Mandarin than me. So let's get right to it. Let's talk about my personal fantasy casting for the Poppy War trilogy. So right out of the gate, let's start off with some heavy hitters. So Jiang Ziya, very important character. He is the very uh, complicated uh, mentor figure for our main character, Rin. He's a shaman, he's a little bit spaced out, but he can be very intimidating and powerful when he needs to be. And for this role, I picked the actor Chen Kun. He's been around in the industry for a long time. I know him best from Rise of the Phoenixes as Ning Yi. He plays this exiled prince who's been brought back into the fold of his father's court, and he's put up against his brothers who are up to their own schemes. So for a lot of that show, he's feigning the part of a really inadequate, um, always slightly inebriated brother, but Actually, he's a pretty uh, thoughtful and uh, very conniving schemer. So I thought he was perfect for Jiang because Jiang also has that dualistic nature. Chen Kun strikes me as the sort of person who can strike that balance between being very gentle and, and kind of vulnerable in certain ways, but also a kind of very uh, strong teacher figure and also just a very complicated character in general. Next up, Su Da Ji who is going to be our villainous empress. So Rebecca Kuang has said that she imagines that Su Daji looks like Zhang Ziyi, who you might remember from Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. She's been in other productions since then. She was also in Memoirs of a Geisha. Uh, she's been in other wuxia films as well. But my personal pick is Gong Li. To me, Gong Li is much more versatile and dynamic than Zhang Ziyi. Um, of course, she's gorgeous. I just like 
like Gong Li's work more than Zhang Ziyi's. Uh, I've seen so many of her films. She was in Farewell My Concubine, which is an amazing movie, Raise the Red Lantern, another amazing but depressing film, uh, the story of Chiu Jiu. Oh yeah, and she was also in Memoirs of a Geisha. But yeah, I find her more dynamic, more versatile, maybe a bit more capable of pulling off that really mean and villainous and yet well-intentioned in her own way sort of person. And also I feel like Gong Li is intimidating in a way that Zhang Ziyi is not. Uh, I could be wrong, maybe I just haven't kept up with Zhang Ziyi's work. Um, I just like Gong Li better. Next up, let's talk about members of the Yin family, uh, the family that's trying to pull all the strings in the Dragon Republic. Let's start off with Yin Vizra, the patriarch that's trying to start a whole civil war in Nikara. For him, I picked Hai Yi Tian, who is also in Rise of the Phoenixes. For someone to play Yin Vizra, he has to have that attitude of a leader, but you also have to get a sense that something's not quite right with him, that there's some cogs turning in there, and that things might turn against you at any moment. And when the other shoe drops, things can go very bad for you. And Hai Tian made such an impression on me in Rise of the Phoenixes. He plays the crown prince, and it's been implied that he screwed over the main character Ning Yi um, decades earlier. And even when he's being nice to people around him, you get the sense that he's kind of an oily person underneath, that there's just something else going on that he's planning. So I like that he has that sort of charisma, but you also get a sense that this is not a good person. Hai Tian pulls that off really well in Rise of the Phoenixes, so uh, he's my pick. For Yin Saikara, Yin Vizra's absolutely psycho wife. This was interesting. She's the one who uh, really believes that the Hesperians will solve all the problems in her family and for the country. She's converted to their religion and she's absolutely awful to Rin. For her, I picked Jiang Jingtong from uh, The Untamed. She is the matriarch of the Jiang clan in The Untamed and oh, she is such a piece of work. She puts crazy unrealistic expectations on her kids. She's horrible to the main character, but she is a formidable fighter. So for fun, I'm casting her in this role. So for Yin Jinja, who is Nija's older brother, he's kind of a pugnacious personality. He eventually meets kind of a terrible fate. I cast uh, Wang Zhuocheng. He plays Wei Wuxian's older brother Jiang Cheng in The Untamed. <laughs> Jiang Cheng also has that kind of hot temper, so I couldn't help putting him in this part. Like him and Zhang Jingtong, uh, play mother and son in The Untamed, and I put them as mother and son in this casting, so uh, I guess that's my way of being cute. Let's move over to the psych or the Sike. I think that's how Rebecca Kwong says it. It's pronounced psych in the audiobook, but apparently there's a discrepancy there. So for the Sike, our band of misfits in the military, our random uh, band of powered up individuals. So for this group of characters, I tried to diversify a bit more and maybe move a bit away from that Han Chinese look uh, where I thought it, it should be appropriate. So in this section, it's going to be more of a mix of C-drama actors as well as Asian actors from um, other sectors of entertainment. So let's start off with Alton. Uh, Alton was so hard, actually. Alton had to look different from a lot of your more Han Chinese looking people. He he stands apart because of that. He's supposed to be good looking, dark skinned, uh, really fiery. He has to pull off that red eyes look. In the end, I didn't go with an East Asian actor at all. I went with a British Egyptian actor called Fadi El Sayed. I don't know if anyone ever watched the Doctor Who spin-off show called Class that aired a few years ago. It's cancelled now, but I personally really enjoyed it. So in it, Fadi El Sayed plays a character character called Ram who goes through a lot of shit in the show. Like his girlfriend dies at the beginning, his dad dies at some point, and then he gets himself involved in a sort of unbalanced love situation. And I liked Fadi El Sayed in that role. He just really gave it his everything and I've been wanting to see him in other work since then. And I think he's dynamic in such a way that I feel like he could really do this role justice. Alton is a really unstable character. He lives with the burden of being the last of his people on Spear and his power makes things really difficult for him. He's highly regarded at Sinegard and he's highly skilled, um, but in the end he ends up being more of a tool 
for his country rather than being regarded as a human being. I feel like that's a big theme in the Poppy War. So yeah, I think Fadi El Sayed would be great. So for Chagon, the shaman who has probably unrequited feelings for Alton. For him, I chose an actor called Wang Haoxuan. He is also in The Untamed. There's a lot of untamed actors in here. He plays a really scary son of a bitch called Xue Yang. I think he delivered one of the most dynamic villain performances that I saw last year. He was amazing in The Untamed, so I would really love to see him play that sort of a really powerful, um, yet has a lot of really complicated character stuff going on inside. Casting his twin sister Kara was very interesting for me. So Chagan and Kara come from the hinterlands, uh, which if you put a map of China and Nikara side by side, it corresponds approximately with Mongolia. So I very deliberately wanted to pick an actress who would represent another Chinese ethnicity. This mattered a lot less with Chagan because Chagan doesn't look like anybody. He's got like white hair, white eyes, no pupils. So for Kara, I decided to go with a, a Uyghur actress called Daisy Dai. I know the Uyghurs are from Xinjiang, which is actually west um, of Mongolia and they should be in that desert region that's west of the hinterlands, but uh, uh, I didn't quibble too much. Originally, I wanted to pick an actress called Dilraba Dilmarat, who is also a very famous Uyghur actress. She's quite prominent in China right now. But ultimately, I found her a little too glamorous looking for the role and Kara is a character who has to really get down and dirty. She has to do a lot of spying activity for the Sika. So ultimately I went with Daisy Dai. She was in 10 Miles of Peach Blossoms as the uh, very naive and innocent ghost princess. I liked her in that role. She can really pull off that very caring sibling role very well. Um, and I'd also like to see her in a role where she's uh, very active and has to do a lot of cool espionage activity. Right now we're gonna go through a rapid fire of of the rest of the people in the Sika. For Ramsa, I picked an actor called Zheng Fanxing. Uh, he was also in The Untamed. He played Lan Sijui, and he was an absolute cutie. I would really love to see him in another very um, active role, but where, where he's also just a cutie pie. Oh, what happens to his character in Dragon Republic? It absolutely killed me. For Baji, the character who wields the nine-pointed rake, I picked uh, someone I haven't seen in a while, Sendil Ramamurthy. If you ever watched Heroes, back in the day, or if you watch the hero spin-off, he played Dr. Suresh. I think he's got the right build for the character, the right look. So for Suni, I picked Yubin, who plays uh, Wen Ning in The Untamed. He plays the ghost general. He's usually a sweetheart, but uh, when his powers get triggered, he gets super fucking scary. I know Yubin doesn't have that kind of bulk that Suni has in real life, but I'm of a mind that uh, movie magic these days, you can do a lot of things to people's physique. And I also think Yubin is really great at playing that sort of character who's usually kind of a boyish cinnamon role, but uh, he can wield a lot of brute strength when he needs to. For our medical expert Enki, I picked Riz Ahmed. I like him. I think he'd fit. And for Unigen, our shapeshifter, I picked Justin Min. You may remember him from Umbrella Academy. I'm gonna throw in some miscellaneous characters in here for our pirate queen, Moag. Uh, she's awesome. For her, I picked uh, Liu Mintao from The Rise of the Phoenixes. She plays this really formidable uh, mother figure who has to lie low to keep her children safe. Yeah, I'd like to see her do more combat and awesome things. For Sister Petra, I just chose Tilda Swinton. Uh, it wasn't like a choice I put a lot of effort into. I just think she'd fit. After seeing Tilda Swinton in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe as the White Witch, uh, I'd like to see her as a crazy religious fanatic. All right, we're coming down to our main, main characters. I know I made you wait. Let's start with Venka, uh, our character who starts out as a uh, pretty mean girl at Synagard, and she ends up being this really a war-beaten and traumatized individual. This was more challenging for me than I expected because I knew I was at liberty to pick a C-drama actress. I mean, she's that very typical uh, northern beauty. She's pale, she's slender. But the thing is, I felt the need to pick someone 
who is very stereotypically pretty, yes, but also has that sharpness to her uh, and seems like they have that ability to be very cruel. So I couldn't pick someone who was too sweet looking or has only played very sweet roles. They have to have the ability to be a good and formidable human being as well as being a very horrible and cruel human being. So ultimately I went with an actress called Ni Ni. She's known for her roles in Love and Destiny as well as Rise of the Phoenixes again. She just is a very versatile actress. She just can play these very gentle and tender uh, people, but she also seems like she has the ability to pull off this very um, sharp and nasty character. She may have slightly aged out of the role. She's 32 now. Uh, Venka is a lot younger than that. But I went through all the actresses I know. I like Nini the best. Uh, I just think she's really good and that she's capable of playing that type of character and I think there are ways you can make her look younger uh, so she's my pick. For Kite, I picked Liu Reilin, who is also in 10 Miles of Peach Blossom. In that show, he plays one of the Kunlun disciples, and later on in the spin-off Eternal Love of Dream, uh, he plays a demon lord. He strikes me as that sort of person who can play that sort of goofy, awkward nerd character, but then uh, is also capable of these really strong character moments. He doesn't quite have Kite's sort of freckled look, but I I feel like you can put these people in cosmetics and that would sort it. Like for a lot of these actors, they don't have the exact features of the people in the book, but I judge this more on their ability to play certain characters. So I think Liu Reading can really pull that character off. Now for Neja, I've been so excited to talk about Neja. So for Neja, there was no question in my mind that the perfect actor for this role is Xiao Zhen. Like, look at that face. He has the perfect face to be Naja. So Xiao Zhen is one of the hottest things in China right now. He became very famous after playing Wei Wu Xian in The Untamed. He has shown himself to be so dynamic as an actor. He's amazing at these really extreme emotions, but also he injects so much fun into his characters as well. And so he's just amazing to watch whatever he plays. And Naja is such a complicated human being. He uh, wants to do things that match up to his morals but he also has the burden of his family legacy. He also differs very much with Rin on how to lead and how to approach certain uh, situations in war. He goes through a ton of stuff and uh, I think you need a very dynamic actor to pull that off. All of that complexity, all of those really tortured character moments. I'd also like to see Xiao Zhen be a mean person, like be mean to people, but also show this big character change, this massive character arc and it would be also cool to see him be scarred on his face like Nija is. Like when I saw Xiao Zhen in The Untamed, I was like, this is Nija. He has to be Nija. And finally, Rin. Who is going to play our literally fiery main character? She is Rebecca Kwong's allegory for Mao Zedong. Uh, who is she? I couldn't pick a C-drama actress for her. It would just be totally wrong. C-drama actresses are so um, pale and delicate looking and Rin is none of those things. So in the end, I picked Karen Fukuhara, who you might recognize from The Boys. I think she was also in Suicide Squad as that character who wields the katana. But yeah, I combed through all the Asian actresses I know, especially Asian American actresses. And I thought Karen Fukuhara was just the best for pulling off um, both that aggression and absolute brute force, uh, and yet that vulnerability that Rin embodies. And Rin goes through this incredible journey of being this upstart who's just trying to make it in life and she becomes um, a leader eventually. She becomes super powerful and she becomes more and more complicated in terms of her morals. She becomes uh, more and more of a tyrant in her own way. But the thing about Rin is that her anger and her aggression comes from this very caring place. She does genuinely care about her people and the state of her country, and uh, she de definitely has fondness for people who were important to her in her life. But over time in the series, it mutates into something uh, very wild and uncontrolled, and she has to learn to control it, but ultimately she's a person of wartime. Her whole life is a war, and she really doesn't know 
how to live without war. So you really need someone who's capable of going through that sort of character journey. And I thought Karen Fukuhara uh, was great in The Boys. Uh, she's also a very traumatized individual who uh, takes all of that out uh, using brute strength. And she also brings a certain tenderness to that character that really adds to that character's dimensionality. And also, I think it'd be great for her to play Asian characters who actually have lines. Karen Fukuhara is great, but somehow she plays all these uh, people who either don't speak English or just don't have that many lines. She has lots of great acting moments in The Boys and even in Suicide Squad, but uh, she never actually gets to talk. So yeah, I love any opportunity to give an Asian actress in Hollywood a uh, powerful characters with spoken lines. So that is it for my Poppy War cast. Thank you so much for watching. I had so much fun doing this. I am really loving finding opportunities for representation of Asians in media, especially in the fantasy genre. Let me know down below your thoughts on my casting choices, uh, whether you like them or even if you hate them. Let me know also if you'd pick someone different for any of these characters. Remember to subscribe to my channel and like this video if you liked it. In the meantime, you can follow me on Twitter and Goodreads and Instagram, and I will see you in my next video.